So what kind of change is the Lord bringing to the body of Christ during these last days? Jeremiah Johnson joins the table to share how God is purifying the church and preparing us for the second coming. Like, comment, and subscribe if our content has been a blessing to you. And click the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. So how can God heal even the deepest pain, rejection, and betrayal? And how is the Lord preparing the church for his second coming? Well, today's guest is here to share how God restored his heart after a very difficult season and reveal what the body of Christ needs to know about this upcoming revival. But first, join me around the table is my daughter, Rachel Ann Brown. How are you? I'm doing good. You're so far away. I know. I love the new set, though. It's I, I do love the new set. The Thank best. you, Lord, for the new set. Amen. Anna Kendall, how are you? I'm just wonderful. Just glad to be here. I'm always excited to be at the table and just so thankful for the presence of the Lord that, we, that we sense here. Amen. And today it's going to be so good. We're going to hear from hear from the Lord. Rebecca Lamb Weiss, my youngest daughter, how are you doing? I'm doing good. And I'll, I keep mentioning to everybody, you're pregnant. I am pregnant. Pray for the baby. Yes. Pray for the baby. And for the mama. Yeah. <laughs> and for the brother and for the husband. <laughs> for sure. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great. Thank you like the way I did that swirl? I love it. I used to can do that, that on my chair. Swirl. I just like swirl around here. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And you know, I think I get to thinking in three months we're going to see a baby. I know. I know. It's Is it that wild. soon? Yeah. Is it that soon? Basically, yeah. Uh, wow. Oh my goodness. Three months. Girl. We're excited. Just it's a exciting. little over You're three. You're going to blink and man. Yeah. I know. It's, be this here. has been the quickest pregnancy ever. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, he's a prophetic voice, best-selling author, and the founder of The Altar Global, a ministry dedicated to getting the church ready for the return of Christ. And today we're excited to have him back here at the table. Please welcome our dear friend, Jeremiah Johnson. So glad to have you at the table today. Thank you so much. It's good to be back with you all. Rachel mentioned that she likes your bomber jacket, and you said that's compliments of your... My wife. Yes. Yes. Looking so no, stylish. No more uh, suits and ties. <laughs> and you said, hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, sure. I let her buy everything and, and I yeah, love it. put it on. That's right. Happy wife, happy <laughs> life. Right. Well, you know, in many areas of the church, there's a significant gap between how God intended things to be versus how they actually are. And as we get closer and closer to the return of the Lord, he is removing that gap. He is purifying the church. He's bringing her back to a place of intimacy, devotion, and expectancy. And he really is separating the wheat and the tares. Talk a little bit about that and what do you feel like the Lord has shown you about that? Yeah, I think that it's time for the church to feed sheep and stop entertaining goats. Mm. I know that that's pretty strong, but Jesus yeah. was very clear about the separation of wheat and tares, yeah. sheep and goats. I think that we're, you know, we're trying to reach a lot of people, which I appreciate, but sometimes that comes at the expense of a remnant that's hungry for truth. And so yeah. I like to say we need a lot less TED Talks and more truth talks. Mm -hmm. I think people are tired of being patronized, kind of that whole therapeutical approach yeah. to ministry. I think people are really looking for courage, voices of truth, and just excited about what God's doing in the church. Mm -hmm. so people for, want the Word of God, don't they? Amen. amen. You know, for 2022... What specifically has the Lord shown you? I know earlier you were sharing about a dream you had. Yeah, on January 1st, I'd had a real interesting dream. I walked into a poker hall. Just throwing this out there, I don't <laughs> gamble or play, play poker. <laughs> but I walked into a poker hall, and on the top, it said 2020 times 2. Oh God. And so I immediately got this feeling that maybe 2022 would try to mimic 2020. At the table, there was a political figure, and then there was five mega church pastors that were around the table. And the first hand went through, and I noticed that at the table, there was one seat that was open. 
When the second hand went through, that political figure had what's known as pocket rockets or two aces. And he pushed all of his chips into the table and every single megachurch pastor folded one by one. Immediately, a man walked in with a T-shirt on. His T-shirt said remnant. And he walked to the table and he played his hand. And I noticed it was a full house. Mm. And I noticed that the political figure was not expecting that this remnant person was going to come in and beat him with a full house. And so... So I didn't even know that. So a full house would beat... Wait, I want to talk about this because I understand poker. Okay, so (laughs) for everyone who's watching, if you don't understand poker, two double aces, that's like one of the best things you can have. Yes. But one of the few things that can trump that is a full house. And the likeliness of you getting that is very unlikely. Very unlikely. I think there could be multiple interpretations to the dream, but what God specifically told me was the double aces was the 2020 and the 2022. The remnant in the full house, the Lord said to me in the dream, 2022 will feel like 2020 early on. And I think we've seen that with some of the virus, some of what the Lord said to me, but I'm looking for a remnant who's going to gather in the full house and call the bluff. Mm, And so I really have been been encouraging people, you know, don't fear, don't get paranoid. 2022 is not going to be as deadly as it was in 2020. But the Lord really, it's the full house. We need people to gather, whether it's in their homes, in the church buildings. We need a remnant to arise. We need a full house of the remnant to stand up. And And to call the bluff. Wait, I have a question. Why do you think the megachurches are folding? Well, I think that there's an agenda there. I'm not saying all, but I think that there's there's a political agenda sort of being in in agreement uh, with an agenda from the government. And I do think that there's a spirit of fear. I do think that a lot of larger churches are being controlled by the government and they're cowering, yeah. not meeting. Or those. They, they've believed the narrative yeah. well, for many of the things that are going on in the world today. They have just accepted it blindly, yes. not knowing that it was deception yeah. from the enemy from the beginning, mm-hmm. and it was going to be about control, not even uh, the pandemic, but it was much deeper than that, wasn't and it? And that was a good question, Rachel, because if you're in a game, this the political figure had the two aces, that could be, an, that's an intimidating hand. And these churches have been intimidated, so it's mm-hmm. almost like they're all like, so well, let's good. just fold, let's give up, let's yeah. fold. But what's cool is that you said we have to gather as a full house and call the bluff. And when someone's bluffing in poker, they don't have as good of a hand as they're saying they they do. They're pretending. And so the enemy is trying to intimidate us right now. And that's what Jonathan Kahn said when he was here. Mm -hmm. Similar. Do you remember Mm -hmm. he said Mm -hmm. that 2022 would look a lot like 2020? Mm -hmm. He said, but... As the darkness is coming, yep. the light mm-hmm. is yes. going to be greater mm-hmm. to overshadow the darkness. Yes. But we have to be that full house, mm-hmm. and we have to stand up. It's like... And when, call the enemy's blood. Well, when, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when Marcus passed, <laughs> and I, I'm, again, I'm not going to get into all the details of that. Um, God knows that, you know, his heart stopped. and and But he had been in there for COVID. He was recovering from it, and uh, he was doing so much better. In fact, the night before he passed, we remember we fed him a full meal, didn't mm-hmm. we? Yeah. You brought in um, a special meal, mm-hmm. and he ate the whole thing. I got him because he was not eating, like, most healthy stuff. So I talked to a nutritionist, and we got, like, something really healthy because I was like, we got to boost your immune system. We got to get <laughs> yeah. you going. And he ate everything, and we put his oxygen back on, you know. Um, but after he passed, the enemy really thought... Mm-hmm. That would slow me down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all it did was speed me up. Yes. That's right. Because That's I'd, there is no way, and I don't cuss, but in hell, that I was going to stop doing. No what we're doing. And, what God and, has and, called you to. And that's what you have to do. You have to have that persistence and that belief that no matter what the devil throws at you, and I'm not saying the devil took Marcus because I believe God took Marcus. I believe it was yes, his time. I do too. But or God allowed it. God, yeah, yeah. God's and, timing. Well, I mean, it, it was his timing, and he had fulfilled his purpose on the earth, which was huge. He was about to separate, uh, to celebrate 50 years of ministry yes. from the time he was 15. His whole life he had yes. given to God. Um, but it just 
it lit a fire under me. And that's where the devil always overplays his hand, doesn't he? Absolutely. I think he's done it here. He's done it with the church. I've just been blessed today, honestly. You guys are flowing with the word of God, with the fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, with it's, the new set. Oh, my. Yeah. There, there's new wine here. Yeah. Fresh wind is blowing. You know, but, um, Mom, I'm proud of you because you had to make a decision. Because yeah. yeah. you were in that moment where that was a huge intimidating moment because everyone mm -hmm. was mocking oh, yeah. Dad. And you could have buckled your knee yeah. beneath yes. the weight of that. But instead, you rose up like the warrior of God that you stronger. are. And yes. you're coming out stronger yeah. than ever. And you all rose up with me. Yes. I mean, did y'all ever you tell me? Y'all made me cry. <laughs> can we move on past Y'all never <laughs> told me to give up. The kids are like right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have six children, three of our own, and then their spouses yeah. that God is raising up as well alongside me. So you have right. seven, mm -hmm. you know, whereas... Before, it was mainly me and Marcus. Yeah. And so what else can you say to encourage people for 2022? You do believe that um, there will be an end-time revival. And we've seen pockets of it, haven't we? Yes, yeah. I guess the, the most concise way that I could say it is I believe that the Lord has used the pandemic to call a holy jailbreak on a religious Egyptian system. Mm -hmm. And so I believe the church has been freed from Egypt. We're now in the wilderness, the church in the wilderness. And you're going to see a remnant follow the Holy Spirit through the wilderness into a new era. But you're also going to see a majority, which represents the mega church pastors, go right back to Egypt wow. and go right mm -hmm. back to business mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. usual. Yeah. So yeah. I would say to people, don't be discouraged yeah. or disheartened by the lack of altar calls, by people just wanting to go back to business as usual. Know that the voice of the Holy Spirit is beckoning people and they're going to have to leave what's familiar, leave what they've known. I get a sense today that some are watching who had a family member die of COVID who had COVID themselves and are just questioning God's ability to heal, yeah. you know, wrestling with their theology about the goodness of God. And I would just speak to them today and encourage them that the spirit of God is going to use what the devil meant for evil and use it for our good and his glory. Yeah. And I, I do believe that those um, who have been afflicted the most. It's like a lot of women who have had an abortion. When they receive the forgiveness of God, they become some of the greatest champions for life. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I just believe that a lot of people have struggled the last couple of years. The devil didn't know what he was doing when he messed with you. Yeah. Can you share with us, because I feel like when you're talking about toward the end of 2022, we're going to see some great move of God. Can you share with us the mandate that God has given you recently. And sure. it's just been life, I think life changing, ministry changing, everything for you. Yeah, we've undergone a, a massive transition. Uh, you know, as a younger prophet, I've tried to do the best that I can, you know, to kind of navigate the plans of the Lord. But I guess kind of to, to touch on it, I had had a series of dreams at the end of 2020. I had seen um, the Dodgers win the World Series, Amy Coney Barrett be set in place as a Supreme Court justice before the election. And then the third thing that I saw was Donald Trump being elected president. And so I had happened to, this was picked up on Charisma Magazine at uh, the beginning of October. And so, you know, the Dodgers win the World Series. So the first thing came to pass. Amy Coney Barrett was set in place. The second thing comes to pass. And then, you know, the weekend before the election, we're in Washington, D.C., Mario Murillo, Lance Wall, now Mario Bramick, just some great guys that love the Lord. And just, you know, rallying the nation, sensing what the Lord was doing. And then, you know, fast forward to election day and just, just the whole swirl, everything that happened. So I had a, a personal decision that I felt like the Lord was stirring me about. It wasn't, re it wasn't about whether I was right or wrong. I had this keen awareness that he was going to use me as a sign specifically to the prophetic movement. And so we went through this season of me offering a, a letter of apology to the body of Christ for what I believe was a miss. But the Lord began this um, incredible work in my heart. 
Uh, it was full of crushing. It was full of um, just searching of my heart. A lot of the folks that had supported us for over a decade sort of turned on us. You know, they leaked our address online, death threats. We lost half of our support base. Wow. We lost about $40,000 of financial monthly support in less than a week. And so we just went through a really rough season. But in the midst of that, God began to refine me. He began to help me find a, a clear focus again on what he'd called me to. So out of that came what I believe him saying, a man in a ministry has to die for an end time movement to be birthed in the earth, which we've called the ultra global. And so I'm really focused on the forerunner ministry that the Lord has given me and mm -hmm. just learning, finding my way. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of older guys and gals who they all went through something in their younger years. And I've just tried, tried to do it uh, with grace and courage, yeah. but I, I, I was not aware that I was under the power of witchcraft so severely. I was invited in July of 2021 to a meeting at Bishop Joseph Garlington's church. Uh, Bill Hammond had invited me to come and just share about my journey. A lot of people had seen me all throughout 2020 and then seen the letter and just trying to figure out what was happening. And I got up to share just shared what my family had gone through. And I tried to get down off the stage and was confronted by a couple of prophets there who said, what the body of Christ has done to you is wrong. And we're here to break the power of witchcraft off of you. And so all I can tell you is they, as they began to confront this thing, my physical body began to respond to their decrees. They began to bind this stuff off of me and Joseph Garlington came up and sang a spontaneous song over me called I Will Restore. And I just, I tell people, I woke up in the hotel the next morning on July 22nd, like seeing in color for the first time in months. Aww. I felt like a thousand pounds was lifted off of me. I felt like I got my mantle back. And I got a call from a prophet that morning that said, Haggai chapter two says on the seventh month, on the 21st day, which was when that meeting was, July 21st, 721, the latter will far surpass the former. And so we have been really since July, I mean, just a couple of months into this whole yeah. thing, feeling revived, feeling refreshed, and just still very much learning um, the call of the Lord. But if you've been watching from afar, it's been a pretty wild ride. Well, you know, and I was going to say, I can um, see the peace on you because yes. the last time you were here, yeah. I could tell that people's opinions had wrapped you up yeah. so tightly. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and I hated seeing that because I, I know early on in our ministry, I had a similar thing when we were on television and I found out there were people that didn't like us and <laughs> people that didn't agree with us. And it so affected me mentally. And I mean, you really have to get free from that. And I can tell that you are. What and do we always say? What do you always say, Mom? Welcome to who? leadership. Yeah, yeah. yeah. welcome to happens. leadership. And welcome to a bigger platform. Yes. Because um, this is what comes along with it. And so the, for the Lord to teach you that and navigate that road for you, it doesn't discount everything that God has shown you along the way. Yeah, I agree. And we could even argue about the stuff that sure. happened because there's a lot, like I said, a lot of commentary on that. It doesn't take away from the fact that you humbled yourself yeah. mm -hmm. and you said, okay, Lord, you know, create in me a clean heart, whatever you need to do. And, and God did that. And how many times did he do that with, but, you with, know, with characters in the Bible? No, I mean, so some true. of the most famous Bible characters. But one Absolutely. of the things that I think that we can all say about you or that we see in you is just a genuine heart yes. to please the Lord. Yes. And it was so interesting watching your journey because it was like you were willing to give all of it up. Like all the platform, mm -hmm. all the, yep. the social media. They were like, I'm deleting it all. I was like, I cannot believe he's doing this because it's. <laughs> I know how hard you know working in marketing yes. and marketing all these things to build these lists and yes. and the Lord is up say, there you know looking yeah. down, thinking, well, Jeremiah, I'm glad you're willing to do that, yes. but son, you're staying <laughs> how, on the course. Yeah. How is your family <laughs> you know? through that? You know, when you went to your wife and you're like, I'm just. The Lord told me yeah. to do that. 
you know, it, it was, uh, I mean, I, I was literally hysterical in my garage one night, just crying, knowing what the Lord was asking us to do. We employ a staff. I mean, I, I knew that we were going to take huge financial hits. You know, as you say, one, it takes years to build yeah. the kind of platform right. that we had. Mm -hmm. And just thinking of just yeah. deleting it all. So, yeah, we just really prayed and asked yeah. the Lord to give us grace. But it, it was an extremely hard but yes, you know, no, but the thing I guess I, I'm excited inside, horrible that you had to go through what you did, but so excited that then God speaks to you and says, now I want you to prepare my bride yes. for my coming. I mean, to me, it was an amazing mandate. Yes. It's almost like... It can't uh, be a higher calling. Yeah, almost. you, I mean, okay. it's that refining fire that makes us who we are. I mean, I heard one leader say one time, I don't want to follow anybody who doesn't have a limb. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that refining <laughs> yeah. fire day, that yes. where God just takes everything out of us and allows that fire to purify us in a way that we really can go to the next level yeah. in Him. Yeah, and and, and, and can that. He trust you? Yes. And that's what He found through this, that He can mm -hmm. trust you. Yeah, and I, you know, the, the way that I describe it to people is it's like the Lord broke me out of one room and has now placed me in another. Yeah. You know, I find myself post everything that happened. I'm carrying a much more global perspective concerning what God's doing in the earth than mm -hmm. I ever have. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of different um, friends in different denominations, different people groups that have reached out to me. And, you know, and it's like, you know, recognize those who, you know, Mike Bickle and R.T. Kendall specifically reached out to me the most during that season. You know, Mike having gone through the Kansas City Prophets, yeah. you know, R.T. knew Paul Kane. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, just some really good fathers that reached out and kind of nursed me through. And but R.T. was close with John Paul. Yes, too. yes. Yeah. But, you know, we had the New York Times, Washington Post, Business Insider. I was the number one article on Politico for yeah. six weeks. And you I mean, weren't wanting any of this attention. No, no. But, but I remember just as recently as a month ago, the Washington Times wanted to do a full page story on me. And their whole premise was they wanted to know why we weren't buried. I mean, wow. it really was the media. I, it was sort of a perfect storm that blew where they thought that they were going to bury yeah. us and I've kind of emerged out of the ashes. Those are the things that, you know, we, we were listening to that sermon by Darius Daniels, and he said, you live life forward, yes, but you right. only understand it backwards. backwards. Yes. And yes. so I really think there are things, even concerning what happened to you, mm -hmm. that you're going to have a greater understanding in the exactly. days ahead. Yes. Well, and, and look so, at what has come out of that. The bride, yeah. yes. the two brides, the altar. I mean, the whole teaching that you all are doing Yeah, on talk that. about that a little bit. Tell Jeremiah. us about that. Yeah, so the Lord has um, just really refined me and caused my focus to be on the preparation of his bride and yes. the need to raise up messengers in every sphere of society. One of the things that the Lord was real clear with me about is that there would be two dueling brides that would emerge prior to his return, a harlot bride and a consecrated bride. And so... You know, we're, we're... Almost like the five foolish mm -hmm. virgins yes. and the five that were ready. Yes, yeah. and yeah, I, think, I think we're seeing the manifestation of a lot of that. But, you know, Jesus' primary warning in all of the New Testament is do not be deceived. So and there's such yeah. massive deception going on in the body of Christ, doctrines of devils that are being preached and seducing people. So we deeply feel called to, again, speak the truth, preach it in love, but to really raise up messengers. I'm probably most excited right now mm -hmm. by just all the individuals that we're seeing um, who are who are recognizing just because you're a lawyer, a doctor, a business person, doesn't mean that God can't use yeah, you. Right. And so We just had a lawyer yesterday. Yeah. Wonderful. Who, who is standing up for truth. He's, he's Jewish. Mm -hmm. He's an Orthodox Jew, yeah. but he is standing up mm -hmm. and he's fighting yes, for, for yes. freedoms for and yes. for people who have been injured and hurt. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's like um, we God were talking. raising up. We were talking about, he and I were talking about that 
I, I told him, I said, well, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, at the end of the day, that's who we're accountable to. And he said, exactly. exactly. But if you don't yes. have that accountability to him, because that's really what the Antichrist spirit is, if we can cut God out and not be accountable and good being called evil and evil be, being called good, you could have never imagined 10 years ago that we would be living in what we're living that's right true. now, could you? Right. There's no way. Yeah, and I think that people have been waiting for a preacher to speak up about issues and I believe God is waiting for people to speak up about issues. Yes. There's something catalytic happening in the nations of the earth. And so the Ultra Global, I feel, is just part of a movement that God is raising up to help facilitate his end time purposes. And we're trying to keep it practical. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're not trying to develop charts and systems and fights about pre-trib, post-trib. I find maybe it's just because I'm in the younger generations. A lot of what we talk about is if Jesus is coming back, how I treat my spouse matters. Yeah. If Jesus is coming back, how I treat my kids, how I spend my finances. And I just find a lot of people today, younger ones specifically, it resonates stewardship, yeah. accountability, yeah. Family. Yeah. family. So important. So uh, your book, it's got the forward by Lou Engel and John Kilpatrick. It's entitled The Altar, Preparing for the Return of Jesus Christ. Who needs to read this book? I believe every person can benefit from the yes, book, whether absolutely. you're a stay-at-home mom, a business person, a preacher. Um, it's getting the best reviews that we've gotten. This is my 12th book that I've written. Um, the best reviews that we've gotten. I think it's deeply resonating the message with a generation. Marcus always said the altar is the meeting place between God and man. I believe that. Such an, yeah. important, such an important part of our lives. Well, we are out of time, but I hope today's program has encouraged you. During this season, God is pointing us back to what's most important, fellowship with him, relationship with him, intimacy with him. It's not just on Sunday in church. I'm telling you, every day God wants to meet with you. And I think it's important that you take out time to spend time with the Lord, to read the Word of God, to pray, to listen to a worship song that brings the presence of God into the room where you're sitting. Uh, this all truly is the key to living a happy, joy-filled life in the times and seasons that we are living. Well, if you're watching today and there's a need in your life, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. I especially felt like there were people watching that could relate to maybe what happened to you uh, is not the same exactly as what happened to Jeremiah, but you could relate in that you have felt like, okay, I've made this mistake, this mistake, this mistake. I don't, I don't really see how God can use me now and I'm not in ministry, I'm not a pastor. Or, And God is saying to you, listen, no, no, I wanna take that, that that you went through and that that I've forgiven you from mm -hmm. and I want, I want you to, I wanna use it yes. to help other people. And uh, so don't be discouraged. I want you to know God is not through with you. If you'd like for someone to pray with you, that's why that toll-free number is on the screen. You can also go to daystar.com, click on prayer, and we will pray over all the prayer requests that come in here to Daystar. But you be encouraged today. God's got more for you. I mean, it's not over. You thought it was over. It's not over. It's just beginning. It's really just beginning how he's going to use you in the days ahead. Well, I want to thank Jeremiah for joining us at the table again. Remember to pick up a copy of his new book, the Altar, Preparing for the Return of Jesus Christ. He's coming, yes. folks. Jesus yes. is coming. For more on Jeremiah and his ministry, you can visit him online at thealtarglobal.com. Be sure to pray for him. I believe God's going to use him in a great way. You're always welcome here at the table, Jeremiah. We love you and uh, appreciate all that you've done and all that God's going to do. As always, don't forget to join the conversation by leaving us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. We always love hearing how Table Talk has touched your life. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you, ladies. We love you. Be encouraged today. Bye-bye.